<laughs> anyway, we'll start with uh, we'll, we'll start with Leonard. How did you come to be the co-author? How did this come together, you and and Stephen writing the book? Well, it started around 2002. I had written my first book uh, called Euclid's Window, which was about uh, the, curves, the concept of curved space and how it came about and how we use it in physics. And then one day, uh, my agent called me uh, and said, hey, guess what? How would you like to write a book with Stephen Hawking? <laughs> I thought about for maybe a millisecond, and I said, yeah, that sounds good. Now, that wasn't this book. That was a, a briefer history of time. And he had had, had the idea to write a book that was uh, a little clearer, more understandable than his original book, A Brief History of Time, which he recognized a lot of people tried to understand but had some trouble with. And he had been looking for a co-author and had, because he wanted to have, have some help uh, rewriting that book and hadn't been able to find anybody that he wanted to work with. And then when he saw Euclid's Window, he liked the way I wrote and he liked the fact that I'm a physicist. I heard the story at first uh, many years later and so he said, I'll write it if I can get Mladenov. And so I said, yeah, yeah. So we wrote that book, and it was a fun book. And when we finished it, I thought, you know, we should write a book about his current thinking. I mean, his thinking has advanced a lot. And in that time, around 2005, he, has, he was just coming up with some really new, interesting ideas. And physics and cosmology had also advanced a lot in those last few years. So I went up to him. He visits Caltech every year for about six weeks. And I just said, hey, Stephen, how would you like to write another book about your latest thinking? And he said, sure. And that's all the discussion there was. But how much of the book is him? How much you? Well, it's hard to say. The book is a book, of course, on his ideas and his latest thinking. But we passed it back and forth so much, I, I couldn't even go back and point out to you. Uh, do you agree with it? Yes, I do. He, I, I'm not I, just a reporter. Report. No, I'm not just a I, I look at it this way. I was, his, I was his graduate student. It was like being a graduate student again, which is kind of the fun of it. So I sat at his side, and he taught me his latest thinking. We argued, we discussed, we debated the implications, and then we debated the book uh, back and forth. Well, he can at times. I interviewed him before. He said, times has been more elaborate. Why do you think he was so direct tonight? I mean, he was concise. He was very concise. Um, and... I'm not sure. Maybe he's been interviewed so much that he, he just wants to cut to the chase. He cut to the chase. Cut to the chase. I know that he's, you know, and over in England, this is such a big thing that, that it's, uh, I think they need to build an electrified fence around his office. So. But his sense of everything he said was concise enough to tell us what he was thinking, right? I mean, he yeah. brought the point home. I think he did, yeah. Okay. And one of the essence is that God didn't teach us this. What, what, what is it to you? I asked him the essence of the book. What is well, it the book you? is about two, two questions, fundamentally. One is, where did the universe come from? And the other one is, why are the laws of nature what they are today? And it does turn out that the laws of nature are very uh, finely tuned to, so as to allow for the existence of intelligent beings. I don't mean to say somebody tuned them, but they just happen to be that way. So th that allowed us to be that way without having someone creating it. Right. Uh, well, let's uh, not prejudge that question, but, uh, but they, when you look at the laws of nature, you find that you can't change them very much without destroying the possibility of complex life. So the book is about the, the, the answers to those two questions. And what we conclude in the book, not what we decide to write the book about, but one of the conclusions in the book, something that's based on those, on the research we talk about in the book, is that God was not necessary to, for either of those, God was not necessary to create the universe or to make the laws what they are. Before we bring in Deepak Chopra's thoughts, does this constitute for us to think that therefore you and he are atheists? No, I think that what we think personally, our personal beliefs aren't really relevant because unlike uh, religion or other fields, uh, science is not based on authority. It's not the authority that Haw Stephen Hawking or Leonard Mladeno says this or that, but we'd like to present our ideas and the ideas of modern science and our own personal beliefs really don't enter into it. Well, I, may I also say we don't tell other people what to believe.